I'm out here at the Jefferson Memorial, and you can see all the barriers that they have out, like this barrier here, where you can't get to the memorial from there, you can't get to the memorial from the front. It's only a one way in, one way out, sort of like they do our communities. I believe in the so. Um, and I don't, I, the, the cops are very professional, the park police are very professional. I think that after the, uh, the excessive use of unlawful force, I think that afterwards it was, they were very professional, very kind and courteous. Uh, I have uh, nothing but respect for the park police, um, and, and actually all police. They have a tough job to do. And uh, I did not, I personally didn't want it to come to that. Uh, unfortunately, what we have is we have a case where you know, uh, a judge has made a ruling that is that is just, uh, I believe, and many people believe, is unconstitutional. Show the world once again, as if they don't see it already, um, that that uh, that that's what the police do. They kidnap people. They hold them for ransom. They aggress against uh, peaceful people every day. They aggress against people for growing their own medicine, cannabis. They aggress against people for all kinds of reasons. It's so easy to break a law these days, and and uh, and the American people are just sick of it. We're sick of of the, of the of the deficit. We're sick of the foreign wars. We're sick of all of it. And you know we can't do much about that. You know we can't do much about it. But you know what we can do? We can disobey and we can do. And that's what we're doing. The, the judge's reasoning. The judge the judge said, I believe, in his opinion, that other people may want to come here and simply quietly reflect and. If there's dancing going on, they can't do that. Uh, I, I believe that there should be some reason, absolutely, but I think silently dancing, uh, you know, where do we draw the line then? If a judge can make a ruling regarding uh, what is appropriate where, and I think we see this trend today in our country. Uh, I think we see, you know, with the free speech zones being set up, the, the First Amendment is, a, it's a very, it can be, it can be an, an inconvenient freedom, right? When we don't, when we hear things that we don't want to hear, which happens Tell every day. Us, if you believe in freedom of information, give us the figure. How much does Putin pay you? How much does I, I, I believe in, uh, I believe in, in no private business. Adam, leave it first. Leave it first. Did you plead the fifth on that? Are, are you Sir. a journalist for Russian TV, the English language service? I'm a host of Adam vs. the Man, and, uh, they have given me full editorial control by contract, and I'm grateful to have that platform. It's something that the American government does all over the world, subverting other governments, and it's sort of like we're the rebels in Libya, except that when we called for close air support, we got a TV show instead. And how many shows have you done on human rights and violations in Russia? You're welcome. Well, that's not really the, the focus of my show. It's about fighting for freedom here in America. What about we don't really have it fighting anymore. for freedom in Russia? You well, said you have Russians. editorial uh, independence. How many shows have you done on human rights violations in Russia? Well, you tell us. <laughs> Adam, is the hope that your <laughs> freedom, the, the fight, the freedom that you fight for here, might be contagious overseas? And it, it looks like it is. It looks like it is. One, one more time, so the gentleman could hear. You haven't done one show on human rights violations in Russia. First Amendment. Oh, it's not what it's about. But you'll take their money. They let me criticize the Russian mm -hmm. government, and I've done that on the Yeah, Thomas is having a rough time. <laughs> hey! Yeah. <laughs>
the most 